guys, welcome to Didi Dye's Crafty Corner. Good morning guys. Today we're going to be playing with the Spring Peony Stamp Set by Honey Bee Stamps. This stamp set is so pretty. I cannot wait to stamp it out. Um, I'm going to be stamping out the florals on one sheet of watercolor paper and the leaves on another and then I will be fussy cutting these out for my card today. We are going to be watercoloring this today and I'm also going to be stamping it and heat embossing it with some Ranger um, white fine detail powder. So this is what one of the my favorite ones for doing this technique and of course we'll be using Versamark which is a sticky ink that helps that powder adhere to the cardstock. To heat it all up today I'm going to be using the Wagner heat gun. I don't think it comes any better than this guy. This guy right here. The Wagner heat gun is superior but when you see me drying my watercolor or anything really that I need to dry I use the Ranger heated up tool and this is like a blow dryer for your paper it's fantastic and I do own both and I do believe that both are necessary although you could just use a regular blow dryer as well so keep that in mind but I never use my Wagner tool to dry my inks because it just gets the paper way too hot so for the paper today we're going to be using Ranger again guys I know I don't know why it's all Ranger today um, watercolor cardstock and this one is a textured on one side wall cardstock and smooth or pretty smooth on the other side I will be using the smooth side I also pulled out my silver um, black velvet brushes I pulled out a two a four a six and an eight to and I'll be picking between those today I'm not sure how detailed the leaves are going to be for me I think I'm just going to keep all this as a wash of color my idea is to you do a washer color, dry it, do another washer color, and call it a day. So that's my plan. Let's see what happens. Um, I really enjoy these brushes because they hold just the right amount of water for me to get through the detail. Um, not too soggy, not too dry. I just think they're perfect. And then also, I pulled out the Daniel Smith dot um, extra fine paints dot sampling book that I have. Um, I'm going to be picking the colors today from this sample card sheet. I use this sample card sheet often, mostly when I'm getting ready to purchase a tube or two of paint. I like to refer to the colors and then I will sample it out again to see how it works on the watercolor paper. And, um, and that's usually how I pick out my watercolors, to be honest. I love this for that. There's there's no way on earth I could afford every one of these, so to be able to sit down and play with them and pick out the ones that I would use more often is a godsend for me, so I absolutely love it. And aren't the colors gorgeous, guys? Absolutely beautiful. I love all of them, and I own, I think I own about 17, 17 tubes so far and um, it's just one of those things where sometimes it's just easier to buy the tube and to um, have that color than it is to try to mix the color. I'm not very good at mixing my colors and I just think these colors are fantastic as well as the minerals in them they just sit differently on paper and I love it so we're going to get started by embossing this I've already put all of my flowers and leaves down on my misty I'm going to take the versafine uh, not the versafine <laughs> the versam mark I almost said versa magic so many verses in my head today I'm going to go ahead and give this a little um, clean up with my anti-static little pad here to make sure that all the powder stays where I want it to stay and then I give it a little blow always just to kind of make sure that none of the powder is too condensed in one area that way I'll get a good even stamp so I'm going to take the ink I'm just going to press it down on my stamps and then I'll close the lid and push it down and I'll give it I'm really going to push down you'll see when I ever get there I'm going to push down really hard on my misty and I do that because um, this watercolor paper although I'm not using the textured side um, it does it does take a little bit to get the ink to soak into the paper and since I don't want to have to do this a hundred times I'm really going to press it down and um, press it kind of hard 
squeeze it all together make sure that all that ink is on there and um, then we will go ahead and get a coffee filter out and use our powder okay so the powder as I said is the Ranger extra de extra fine detailed white embossing powder I'm going to go ahead and put it on both of these panels collecting it in the coffee filter for easy cleanup and then we're going to heat it up with the Wagner heat tool so I always heat it up um, away from the card stock for about 30 seconds or so make sure it's nice and hot and then I bring it to the paper and I quickly doing little circular motions um, heat emboss it just to the point to where it's shiny where you can see the difference in texture and not any longer than that because you don't want to melt your powder off completely and then I run it over the back just to stop the warping all right now for the watercoloring part I picked two of the greens from the dot chart or a dot, dot card if you will and one of them is sap green which I do already own and the other is a green that I've wanted to try and um, it's called Serpentine Genuine and it turns out that's the only one I used. So I'm going to show you how I get them from the dot form onto this my little tray here and whatever I don't use on the tray I leave on the tray to dry. I have about 30 of these little trays and I just leave it on the tray to dry and I will come back and use it another time. So right now I'm just picking up color with my brush. I'm adding it to the dot of water that I put in the tray and when I get the saturation of color that I think I'm going to be using, then I will stop. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be using for all of those leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other one and then we will get started. So um, I skipped forward. All I did to prep this piece of cardstock was to go ahead and wet my leaves. So as before I start adding my color, I'm just putting down some clean water and then I'm gonna be adding the color throughout these leaves. So part of them I will not be doing on camera. The other part I will, it's just, I'm just giving you an idea of how I do this. This is a super long video, guys. So I'm adding just the smallest amounts of paint, as you can see from that little dot that I have up there. I'm just adding the littlest amount of paint to this and because the water uh, the paper has already got water on it it's just taking it and moving it along and I'm using my brush not so much to paint but just to move that color around the wet part of the cardstock so that it doesn't sit too strongly in one area versus the other area okay so I'm going to go ahead now and switch over and show you what it looks like as just before I get ready to dry it so as you can see, barely dipping, barely, barely dipping into that paint just to get just the littlest amount of color just to give this the first wash of color. We will be doing a second wash after I dry it. See, what it, that's what it looks like now. Pretty, right? See the little brown areas in there? That's what it looked like with the first wash. I'm going to go ahead and dry it. And then I'm going to very quickly show you what it looks like after the second wash. And you can see there's just a little tiny bit of paint in there, guys. That's all that's left in there. And we're going to use that paint and we're just going to add a, a little more color to these leaves. Just in some areas where I might want it just a little bit darker. And see, it's just moving perfectly around those leaves. And you can actually see the white embossing powder as well um, shining in the light. So it's, it's just it's so pretty. This color is so pretty. So let's see what I'm doing now. I think that's it and this is what it looks like when it's all dry I believe that's just about dry that one in the middle maybe not so now I'm going to go in and show you again the technique I've got my dots of water in my tray and I'm just going to show you the one but I'm taking the color I'm really saturating it on my brush and then I'm going to mix it all together right 
and then that is going to give me the pigment that is going to be the colors for the flowers. So I've added a little bit of water in the middle of the whale in case I wanted this to be lighter. It turned out these colors were perfect. And the colors that I used in the what you're seeing in the display right now, the top one is of course the sap green I didn't use. The next one is, um, Kada I never can say this right, Kadakodone Fuchsia. The next one is Rose Matter Permanent, so that's in the second pink. The third pink is um, Rond, what is it, Rondonite? Genuine, let me just look. Let me make sure, Rondonite Genuine. And then the last one is Quadacridone Rose. So those were the four colors that I chose to use for this. So now I'm just gonna, again, I've wet down all of my petals, so all of my little petals on this particular flower, and I'm gonna put the color down on it, move it around a little bit, and then I'm gonna move on to the second and third and fourth flower. Again, I will dry it, and then I will um, come back and add another layer of color where I think I would like it. So. At the end of this card, you'll notice that there's not a lot of differences in these colors, which I was so surprised about. The um, very last color that's in the well is the darkest color, and I believe that's the one I didn't use. Um, those two flowers I never used, but the other three were the first three colors that are on there. I thought that they were very, very much the same colors, just a little, I really liked the, um, which one was it? The second one, the Rose Matter Permanent. I thought that was really pretty. This one that I'm doing right now, super pretty. The color was awesome. So I, I don't have that one either yet, but I'll be picking that one up. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip you to the end of this one, and then we will go ahead and put this through. So I did the same thing. I'm just laying down some color. The um, cardstock or the watercolor paper is is really wet so my color is moving and um, as I need to I'm drying on my little color cloth over there I'm just going to color it and um, add some more color where I want to keep it and then I clean it off in the water that is to the right of me that's what I was trying to think of so to the right of me I have a jug of water a little container of water and I'm cleaning the brush off there and then I take it over to dry it off on that cloth if I need to dry it off so I'm gonna go ahead and color like I said all the rest of them on camera speed it up only two times and I really want you to look at the the colors. I really believe that these that the colors of these watercolors are just spectacular and I know I've said it a few times and please excuse my head. Guys, you know I can't see worth a poop. So sometimes I and this is very hard to see this light these lines sometimes. So I'm doing the best that I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and color the third one, which is a third color. And then I will um, color the last two. And the last two were super, super bright. They were, they were a bright pink. And I didn't end up using those two, but they were a really cool color. But in, in light or in reference to or sitting next to these three, they were just a little too bright, I thought. So I didn't end up using the last two, but I think that the colors were just beautiful. Now, as you can see, that one <coughs> in the lower right-hand corner is still wet. When it dries, it is, it is so much lighter. And that's the one thing that I was shocked by these colors when they dried. Um, they were just the palest, most gorgeous color. I did go ahead and um, dry them with the heat tool, um, and then I added that um, second layer. Uh, just a, again, just a wash all over. See that color? Isn't it gorgeous? Ugh, I cannot wait to play with it one more time. Um, but for this card, it just wasn't the right color combo to go with those other colors that were so much lighter. So isn't it, aren't they pretty? 
they turned out so pretty so off camera because this is so long guys I went ahead and cut out my panel I took a piece of vellum and I ran it through a embossing folder I put it on some gingham paper I wanted there to be a little extra detail with those dots going over the lines in the paper I used a frame by Gina Marie designs and framed it all out I'm using a top folding um, landscaped card and a piece of fun foam so I've cut down my fun foam and I'm going to be popping up my panel with the fun foam onto my card base the card base is a standard five and a half by four and a quarter and it's going to leave me just a little bit of white around the edges so I'm going to take my florals here and arrange them the way I want them to be and I'm going to pop them up with 3D foam tape, which I've already done. And I'm going to be putting the darkest or the, uh, the I don't know, I call it the darkest, but I'm going to be adding the largest floral to the bottom right above the sentiment. Now the sentiment I cut out with vellum and I heat embossed a sentiment on it in white and I attached it to the bottom of the frame underneath the frame so that those little scallops would have a little bit of glue and hold it in place and then our leaves and florals will hold it down the rest of the way so that way I didn't have to hide that vellum right so now I'm going to play around with getting my um, little blooms exactly where I want them and I even thought about switching them over from one side to the other but mm, no I didn't like it that way so I put it back and I'm going to be the the one on the very bottom is popped up with two layers of tape and the other two are popped up with one layer of tape so that's giving us a tremendous amount of definition and um, interest to the card and then my little leaves that I'm going to be sticking on the top on which is where I was going to put the other bud by the way but the bud was just too bright I'm going to be applying that with just the art glitter glue and I'm going to just attach it down directly to the card panel so that that will be on the bottom layer I wanted to have one leaf stuck on top and one behind that floral image so that added a little more um, detail and then I just added three little sequins to the top to finish off the card I think it is super cute and I think that the water and I added some um, glitter art some sparkle pen to the top of the floral as well when I was all finished so here's the close-up pictures I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope I didn't ramble on too long but I will see you in the next video bye